I don't know what to say. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel that is completely dead. Um, I'm sorry, this is the ninth circle of hell. And um, <laughs> if you're watching this right now, thank you and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, with me, I have my friend, Cami. Hi. Her, her TikTok name is, you wanna say your, your TikTok name? Oh geez, I don't even remember what my TikTok name it's is, like, but my but my Instagram is Tamara Lynn, Lisa or Tams Lynn. Tams Lynn, something one like of the that. two. You know, I'm yes. following her, so if you just scroll through my following, you'll find her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's around the same thing for my TikTok too. It's either Tamara or Tams Lynn. I think it's Tamara because on my last live I called you Tamara because I didn't know. Um, yeah, I think so. That's called. right. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I think you're right. She is a big horror fan. So today our topic is horror movies because it's going to be spooky season. And if this goes yes. well, if Tammy wants to come back, maybe we'll do a part two more towards Halloween. I'm so down. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. All right. So I've been looking forward to this all day because I am so excited because I don't ever find horror movie fans. Like everyone is so scared like watch anything with me <laughs> or talk <laughs> about anything the movies they have seen is like paranormal activity and like that's it like, <laughs> or like the conjuring movies you know what i mean oh my gosh i love the conjuring movies that's on my list actually really? that's a good franchise yes so with me the, the thing about the conjuring is that they are nowhere on my list and <laughs> a lot of people might not agree with that but like i always feel like the conjuring movies for me like they're like just okay does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Like they're like, yeah, that's so cool. Good. Like they're not yeah. bad. They're, except the nun. I hate the nun. I'm sorry if I offend anyone. I don't like the nun. <laughs> I was so mad. I left that movie theater. I was like, what did I just watch? I, think, I just love those movies because I love the Warrens. They're hist historical, they're legends. Mm -hmm. They're there's no one else like them. I so. mean, they're, they're icons. Even if you don't believe in what they did, because a lot of people don't believe their stories are real. You have mm -hmm. to hand it to them. They made a lot of money making up stories then. But yep. You got to give them some respect for that. Oh, yeah. They're they're historical figures at this point. Even if they were lying, they're going to be part of horror history. Yeah. I, and I love I love the two actors that play them. Um, yes. Vera Farmiga. I was, a su I was such a big Bates Motel fan. Me too. She was so good in that. And oh. I love Bates Motel. I, I had such a big crush on the guy that played Norman. Oh, Frankie something. I forget his name. Oh, Frankie Fre Highmore or something. Freddie Highmore. That's it. Freddie Highmore. Yeah. He's oh so God. good. He is. He is so like adorable. <laughs> okay. So first things first. Have you seen any new horror movies lately? I just saw Candyman on Tuesday. How was it? It was so good. Was like, it? It was so good. It, it had a backstory and everything. Like the original was basically about the myth and um, mm -hmm. it just being a really good, I guess, kind of slasher type of movie. But the remake, it's modernized and it touches on like some social issues and it's, it's really good. It's a good, scary movie with like a good backstory. Really? I've never seen the so original. Good. I want to see the remake though. I've never seen the original. I love Tony Todd. Is Tony is he in it? I'm not even sure. I wasn't familiar with the actors. I'm not sure if I was actually. One of them looked familiar, but I have to say that about Candyman, I have that phobia that with patterns and beehives. I forget what it's called. It's like trichophobia. With like with like the little circles. Yeah. Okay, I know. I about. hate that. I, I cringe every time I see anything like that. So that movie is a big trigger warning for anyone who has that phobia. Oh, uh, just saying. Yeah, I <laughs> but it's a, so good. I have a lot of phobias, but that's not one of them. <laughs> I don't know why it's so creepy. I think it's like I, I thinking like yeah, it's like disease on the skin, and it, it, it that's a scary thought. So I think that that's what causes the phobia. You know, you know? what? I bet Eddie Castro has that as well. Oh, he would. He would totally I, have that. I, oh, yeah. 100%. No, I don't blame you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I recently saw Monday or Tuesday, I watched uh, Malignant. Um, which is, oh, that movie looks so good. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> it is nothing like the trailer. Nothing. Okay. Um, it is so silly. It is like a B horror movie wrapped up into a big budget uh, film that got sent to theaters. And I don't want to spoil anything for you or anybody else. <laughs> like I'm fine with spoiling like older movies, but not movies that are currently, you know, in theaters and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, out of like a one out of 10, 10 being the best. A five. I would say, okay. a, right, right, Dad? It, okay. If you go into it knowing that it is stupid, you might like it. But if you go into it thinking this is going to be so cool and this is going to be such a good horror movie, you're you're going to get like disappointed with it. So if okay. You go into so with it, no expectations. Go in with no expectations. However, okay. I will say Andy Bean is in it. <gasps> and he's a small part. He's a small part. And the second I saw him on my TV screen, I was like, and I was alone in my room in, in uh, the living room because again, no one watches horror movies with me. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's Stan. but he made me happy to like see him Mm -hmm. but it has it has good things in it like there's some good scares some good jump scares good scenery it's just the story you know what I mean okay it gets you really gotta stretch your imagination and let reality kind of bend and okay so you watch it with an open mind and no expectations and you leave happy Yes, and um, trigger warning for this movie for um, um, uh, domestic abuse and uh, miscarriages. So mm-hmm. trigger warning for anybody. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I saw that. And then last week, I got my husband to watch As Above, So Below with me. And I had never seen that movie before. I don't know if I've heard of it. That title sounds familiar. So it's about the um, Paris or the, the France, Paris or French, I don't know, I don't know which one it is, it's, um, I think it's the Paris, what's the word, catacombs, okay, uh, underground, where all the, like, uh, they have, like, all the real, like, skeletons underneath, oh, that'd be so cool, yeah, and it was actually filmed in them, so there's actual real, um, bones in the movie, and I have a fear of anything underground, oh my and gosh, same, Mm-hmm. It was, and that's when my husband watched it with me because this movie's from like 20, I don't know, 15, 2014. And I had put off watching it for so long. And I still went to bed with nightmares. I, I shouldn't have watched that movie. It creeps me out. I There's a movie called The Descent that I have nightmares about to this day. And I saw it 10 years ago. And it gave me a lot of The Descent vibes. I don't know if you've ever seen that one. No. That one. I don't- uh, I don't think I want to. I'm scared. (laughs) That one's about creatures eating people underground. And it's, oh my gosh, it's bad. It's like, it's like maybe for other people, it's easy, easy, whatever. But for mm -mm, for me, oh my gosh, the only movie that caused me nightmares and to be traumatized with is like, I saw it when I was eight and I've never gotten over it Pet Cemetery. The original? Yes, and the remake. They're both just disturbing to me. There's something about dead children like killing their their family. It's it's traumatizing. Like and the big thing about those movies and the books, the book as well is that um mm-hmm. it's about a parent's grief and that's super sad. No, losing no, your child. Definitely. definitely. Yeah. Um, so that's a big trigger warning for that I- movie. I saw Pet Cemetery when I was younger, but I wasn't allowed to see the second one because my dad said the second one was like super triggering and traumatizing. I watched the first one, I was okay. And I recently Mm -hmm. watched the remake and it was so hard for me because the cat in that movie looks almost identical to my cat Sassy that passed away a few years ago. So it was tough. Um, I didn't like the remake. (laughs) I didn't, I got the original original so much better. Yeah. Um, But and I'm and I have a big sensitivity when it comes to animals. Me um, too. Animals it's a children. huge thing. Like when people die in films, I'm fine. But if you kill an animal, why do you have to do that? Yeah, like animals and young, like young children. So like when Georgie um got his arm bitten off, that like and when he cried for Bill, like that like like tugged on my heartstrings. 
Like I know, it's so I, sad. I was in shock that they actually showed a seven year old getting like you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. usually those don't make it to theaters. Usually those are like the sketchy. You you torrent those online and you watch them in your basement. You know what I mean? Like you don't see those yeah. in theaters. You know, but a big movie for that would be Doctor Sleep. I don't know if you've seen that. Have you seen I, that movie? I haven't because I haven't seen The Shining. You haven't seen it? No. <laughs> And the only reason why I haven't is because of the way Shelley Duvall was treated. And uh-huh. I feel really sad for her. So I kind of like made a vow of like, out of respect for her almost, I'm not going to watch it. You know, it, oh I know gosh. that sounds weird because like she, you know, she probably doesn't care, but you know. She, I have to say though about The Shining, she is the reason why The Shining is amazing she oh, yeah. is the warrior in it well, like I've, I've seen the iconic clips and she's you know fantastic mm-hmm. you know it's just I guess the stuff behind it like like I have like, yeah. a moral limit you know what I mean mm-hmm. and but, it's obvious that that movie traumatized her for life like in interviews you can see it it's just that one event did it that's so sad honestly it's so sad and was it worth it like yeah we have this great piece of media forever but like it wasn't worth her Mm -hmm. you know what I mean yeah no job should take away uh like somebody's well-being mental health no matter how much they're paying you like you know but something about Shelley Duvall I don't know if you've ever seen the fairy tale theaters have you ever seen that no I haven't so good she used to host them and um they are pretty scary because like the I think it was the Grimm brothers that brought uh the fair like all those fairy tales so they're actually yeah. really disturbing the fairy tales like um uh, Goldilocks yeah all of them are yeah. scary I know as f tales you know what? they're, they're you... not intended for children I think I've had one of those books now that you now that you mention it I had one of those mm-hmm. when I was little, like the original. Like they're terrifying. They are. They're so dark, and I love that. And I think, like when I was a kid, I loved horror movies and I loved anything scary. And I think it's because when you're a kid, like um, you know, scary things are happening around you, like what's happening in the news and everything. But when you're so young, it doesn't. You don't feel the same like sort of empathy because like you're so young, you don't know what's going on in the world. You know what I mean? But with scary movies, um, that fear triggered such a huge emotion in me that like I never felt before. So Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I just like intense emotions. And you get that from scary movies. You get that from romance movies. Even like It Chapter 2, where at the end you find out that Richie was in love with Eddie. That was a huge emotional, (laughs) intense emotional moment for me. And it's like, wow, this is a great movie because of that <laughs> when I tell you I sobbed in the movie theater I had been shipping them since I read the book when I was 12 like like that was that was the most in your face I told you so moment for me mm-hmm. oh my gosh for me it was like oh I didn't even know but like now it makes so much sense and it just stuck with me forever I was like oh my gosh he never Richie never got to live out his the the love life he wanted like that's so sad we need to fix it we need a, we need a, we need like a fix it sequel <laughs> yeah yep yeah, I agree we should be the directors let's do it yeah no for real <laughs> <laughs> just step aside Andy <laughs> <laughs> we got this <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's funny is that Andy said in um an interview that he made it intentionally vague um if Richie and Eddie ever actually had a relationship with each other at some point because they changed things from the book not everyone moved away right away to Derry after uh, after uh, from Derry after the events of it so it's possible could have Richie and Eddie dated in their like could they have been high school sweethearts and Richie remembered faster than Eddie did yeah that's so possible and like I think the way the movie did end like it being so vague their relationship like whether it happened or not is a huge like reason why it's still such a big movie because like you're thinking about the what if because you don't we don't know you don't get many um in horror movies especially you don't get many gay representation 
And if you mm-hmm. do, usually they, they're for comedic relief, which I mean, Richie kind of is, but he's not a stereotypical type of, you know, gay character or they get killed off pretty quickly. Yeah. And so I think it's so important to the LGBT community, uh, horror fan LGBT community to have Richie and Eddie as representation. I love it. Even though I think yeah. most illusions. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, after this, I'm going to go watch it chapter two, I think. <laughs> oh, my gosh, yes. oh my gosh. I love it. Um, okay. So we both made a top 10 horror movies list. And I thought it'd be fun to compare them and see if we have like any of the similar like uh, same movies on the list. You know what I mean? And it'd be fun to talk about them. Um, did you make an honorable mention list as well? Yes, I did. I have a few okay. movies in there. Okay, so I will. So we'll do the top ten lists first, and then we'll both exchange the honorable mentions at the end. Um, okay, sounds good. So what I was going to do is that you say your top ten movie. And then we'll discuss a little bit. And then I say my top 10 movie and then we'll, we'll go back and forth like that. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So do you want to start okay. first or do you want me? Um, I'll start. Um, my first, you. my 10 is the Leprechaun series. Have you seen that? Yes. Uh, Miss Jennifer uh, Aniston. Uh, yes. Her first movie. Yes. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think of those movies in making my list. I don't even know how I remember them because I haven't even seen them since I was a little kid, but it's ridiculous. terrifying. They're terrifying and then ridiculous. Like there's like leprechaun in the hood and then there's like yeah. go to space <laughs> and then there's leprechaun back to the hood. <laughs> yeah, there's so much. And like, it's just taking something so small, like, like a leprechaun and making it so terrifying. And there's something so cool about that. <laughs> I 100% agree. There's like this one of the movies, there's like somebody like slowly like expanding and like explodes. I remember mm-hmm. it like terrified me um, during uh, St. Patrick's Day weekend when I was a kid, they had a leprechaun marathon on TV and I watched it and I was, <laughs> nope, I didn't watch <laughs> leprechaun the visit me for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, those deaths were probably one of like the most scariest deaths in yeah. movie history I like even for the late 80s or I think yeah 80s and 90s they were terrifying they were so gruesome and okay. just by a leprechaun and there was a little like, leprechaun a magician one yeah have you see, remember that the magician one where they're cutting somebody in half oh yeah you remember that this terrifying yeah. this it was gonna be a magic trick yeah and he always talked in riddles too he was like the lucky charm guy going psycho he was <laughs> everywhere he went it was like a sing song like yeah riddle um, so i forgot to say this before we started i wanted to just let everybody know that that our top top 10 lists are just our personal opinion we're not saying these are the best movies of all time we're not mm-hmm. saying that they're even good. We're saying these are our favorites and that we like. And if you guys in the comments after watching this live stream, if you guys want to go in, tell us your favorites, go ahead. Um, we're also not like hating on any movie. Like if you hear us say a movie that we don't like, I mean, everyone has opinions. You know, you, you get what I mean. Like, you know, at the end <laughs> of the day, it doesn't matter. You know? Exactly. All right. My top, okay, so my my number 10 is the Nightmare in Elm Street series. Oh, yeah. I love those movies. Leprechaun vibes. It does. They kind of yeah. look the same, but Freddy Krueger's just tall. Yeah. And and he also the leprechaun's taunts. tidy. And he also mm-hmm. taunts his victims. Yeah, he does. And, there, yeah, and there's something really scary about the thought of going to sleep and not waking up. Yeah. And it, like seeing like dying from a dream like and he's based off of a true like event that happened mm-hmm. um not saying there was a real guy killing somebody in their nightmares but somebody who had kept having nightmares of somebody was trying to kill them and they eventually did die i think they died of a heart attack from all the stress in their sleep yeah um so that thought right there is just terrifying as also about Nightmare on Elm Street also like brings up to me like sleep paralysis and how scary that is. I have that. 
oh my gosh, really? That's, it's so I scary. Do. I do, but I, I feel blessed because I only get it when I nap in daylight. And I really? don't have anything scary happen. I only have like, I'll have like conversations with people that aren't even in the house. Like it's a, it's not, I don't, I thank God I don't get sleep paralysis and demons. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> terrifying. But Those stories. Scary. Oh yeah. But it's still really scary because I can't move. Yeah. And, and like, I know what's happening too. And there's nothing I can do about it. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Um, yeah. But no, I love, I love Freddie. I think he's my favorite horror icon before Pennywise came, before the new Pennywise came along. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have like all eight movies. I don't have the remake. The remake, fun fact, the remake was filmed in the town that I was living in while I was living there. And it was filmed in a cemetery where one of my loved ones is buried. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and we actually drove past the cemetery while they were filming. And we That's saw- That's so cool. Yeah, and like, there's a paper, like the movie wasn't great, but it's still really cool, you know? Yeah, yeah, and you mentioning like, um, uh, that Freddie is one of your top, like, as well as Pennywise. I just wanna mention that both of those two characters um for being evil they have such big personalities I know they're very flamboyant (laughs) yeah and it just it makes you remember them (laughs) yeah and I know they're gonna make another Nightmare on Elm Street and there's rumors that um Robert England who plays Freddy is going to be back I hope so that would be nostalgic and amazing I'll be be there on opening day like yeah me too (laughs) I'll be in the lineup I'll wear gear I'll wear my Freddy gear (laughs) okay do you want to say your ninth well, my ninth is Pet Cemetery. I kind of already went into that, but okay. um, but yeah, there. When I was a kid and I watched that, I couldn't sleep for about five days. It, it was just so terrifying. Yeah, the original was just terrifying to me. Something about dead children and ghost children. It's that's that's the worst fear for me because I don't even know if you've heard about the the urban legend called the Black Eyed Children. Have you ever heard of them? <laughs> no that sounds terrifying. <laughs> it, it is it's um it'll be a child that knocks on your door in the evening and they have their head down or they have a hoodie on and they want to be invited into the house and they give you because like oh there was an accident can I use your phone but the moment you invite them in the house you see their eyes are black and then they try to like suck your soul out and it's an actual <laughs> legend like people say they've witnessed this no. and yeah that just scares me <laughs> No, I don't know if it's no. real but oh no there's there's a that reminds me of um it's not a horror series but have you ever seen the Umbrella Academy series yeah the se- season two where they're where they go inside the uh office building the government building and like Vanya and spoiler alert for Umbrella Academy I guess Vanya's sucking everyone's energy out and they're like sucking face on the ceiling and their eyes are just um they're like creepy like yeah have you seen it? it sounds like that. It's terrifying. I'm, I'm, I love Umbrella Academy. I'm not supposed to be scared of it, but I was so scared of it. It's so scary. Okay. Um, my number nine is by far not the best movie of all time, but this is nostalgic for me. It's 13 Ghosts. Yes. That's a good movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard. Somebody on TikTok told me I look like Matthew Lillard. I don't know if they were trying to insult me, but you know what? Only compliments here for my king. I would take that as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, love him. That I remember seeing that and crying as a kid because my, like, I was like seven or eight when I first watched that movie. And I was so scared of it. And I, sh- I was like, Shaggy died in front of my eyes. <laughs> and it was so traumatizing. But it's, it's again, not the best movie, but it's so good it's good still like it's so good it's so nostalgic and the glass house and the ghosts and the the naked woman and it's scary (laughs) and that makes it such a good movie yes i love that movie yeah now i want to watch it too i I know well now i'm watching horror (laughs) movies (laughs) okay okay now you can share your number nine okay oh number eight um Oh, oh no yours is Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Number eight. <laughs> um, Child's Play. The series or just one of them? Oh, um, I would say the first three. The first the one, three? Um, 
the one with Andy at the beginning. So Andy and his mom and Chucky, obviously. And then yeah. part two had to do with, um, so in part one, Andy's mom, Chucky killed Andy's mom. So he had to go to an adoptive family in part two. Mm-hmm. And that's where him and his adoptive sister kill Chucky in the toy store, which was a really iconic, cool death. And then uh, part three is when Andy goes to the military and Chucky follows him there. <laughs> and it's just it's just the oddest storyline, but someone, it's awesome. Find someone new, Chucky. Stop being that <laughs> obsessive girlfriend slash boyfriend. Like, move on. I know. And then, like, there were all these Chuckies that came after, but they turned into, like, these comedies and the, the scare wasn't really there yeah. anymore. But I've, the first three were scary. So out of the first three, I've only seen the second one. For whatever reason, as a kid, my friend only had the second one. I would go to her house at like nine, ten years old to watch scary movies when we weren't supposed to watch the scary movies, you know. Yeah, and, um, good times. <laughs> and I only saw the second one because the only one she had. But I remember there was like a ruler. She like killed the, mm-hmm. kid, the ruler. And like it, bo- it bothered me. And at some point he gets burned. And after Burned Chucky was so scary to me as a kid, because we had a Chucky doll. It was like my cousin, and we had it at my house. And they, my my family would think it was hilarious to scare me with it. It wasn't funny. Oh my gosh, I have so many Chucky dolls. Well, I have two. Really? <laughs> yeah, and I have like the actual Child's Play or, yeah, Child's Play doll. So it's still in the box, and it's the size of a toddler. So it's scary. <laughs> I'm not in, so I'm not really into the Chucky. Like they're like the but they're like some of the series are they're there for me. The Chucky series is just there. Um, mm-hmm. I don't dislike it, but I like I saw the remake when it came out. You know. Oh yeah, I, I saw keep, that too. Yeah, I keep updated with it, but I mm-hmm. think um, I know it was on your list. But I know I list, but Tiffany is such a cool looking doll to me. She like, is. She's, she's so, badass. Yeah, she's so like punk rock and yeah but the, I agree the series took like a crazy turn and the remake wasn't the greatest not very no. scary the changes they made didn't make them scary like yeah, yeah. sometimes you just gotta stick with making it once because like it, it was so good the original the original three child's play top notch you can't mess with those and again even though I'm not a big fan I can agree from what I've seen of the first three they're terrifying yeah, and that's and, what a scary movie is. It should be terrifying. And Chucky walked so Annabelle could run. Like, mm-hmm. like you know. Okay. All right, what's my number eight? My number eight is uh, The Blair Witch Project. Mm. <laughs> yes. I got that somewhere. Oh, I got that in my mentions. Oh, yes, mentions? Blair Witch. Um, I know a lot of people don't agree with that because that's a very you love it or hate it movie because I know a lot of people are very bored. Uh, with that film but there's something so scary about it because it feels so real yeah it does and that's that is the movie that brought forth like all these different um kind of like do it yourself yeah do it yourself footage movies the image of the guy in the corner it is people are like well i want to see the witch you don't need to see i think it's scary that you don't see the witch Um, yeah it's so true yeah like apparently they had intended they had a witch and they had intended on showing her but they cut it out because they thought it was scarier without it but I, i'm curious mm-hmm. to see what their witch looks like yeah and i don't think we ever see the witch like even during the, the re- not remakes but like the sequels to it but um i remember when it came out in the 90s it was such it was probably a year people thought it was real and like there was a website dedicated to finding these three people it, it was, was so real yeah and then all of a sudden they were like in an interview and people are like oh so it wasn't real (laughs) it was but it was very real to that those actors because they had very little direction most of the stuff Mm -hmm. they said was improvised all the stuff they came upon they didn't know they were going to come upon they were really scared like they were actually scared they didn't know what was going to happen and they actually got lost because at the end of the day it was three people in the woods with a camera and then the crew was somewhere else hidden away from them like that's yeah terrifying. that is really scary like that scene where they're where they're in the tent at night and then like all oh the, the children are around them and then start pounding on the tent they didn't know that was gonna happen <laughs> I'm gonna piss myself. 
<laughs> me too. <laughs> Take me home. <laughs> okay, what is your number seven? Okay, my number seven was Nightmare on Elm Street. We already oh, talked about the that. Yeah, so so that so there's one, I guess one point for this. <laughs> we have a, a one in common so far in our top ten list. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so what's yours my number seven is insidious i haven't mentioned that one yes that's so good um, they're so scary yeah. another thing about dreams right because the kid goes into a coma am i remembering yeah, that he's right like, he's like trapped in a weird like purgatory thing yeah um it's scary there's one thing i gotta say about insidious and it was a comment on the YouTube, uh, the YouTube account that posted the scene, and it went viral. And it's the part where the guy is talking, uh, Patrick Wilson, I don't know what his name was in the movie. Um, mm-hmm. And then the red-faced demon pops up behind him. And the, the, the comment says, I was scratching my balls and I almost ripped my dick off. <laughs> That is the scariest part in the movie. So yeah, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> For real, I explained that to the doctor. <laughs> um, but that would be first in the ER. <laughs> that movie okay. was so uh, creepy um, to me. Like what it, is it your bother, like, like it was number so scary, but like it didn't bother me. Six like, is the Halloween franchise, like, okay. especially the first two so original like, no not like, the yeah the second and, one kind of drifted off because it was about a witch so i would say one and three are my favorites yeah because it got weird with like the masks and stuff oh wait i think it's number three that's the witch yeah so one and two are the good my favorites <laughs> i i don't have them on my list because there are another series that they're iconic i do like them but they're like it's not like something that's like oh it is my i you know favorite but those mm-hmm. were the, those were some of the movies that I'd watch a lot as a kid too, and you know around Halloween time they would have like AMC would have like marathons. Yeah, just, yeah, like such a Halloween time movie, mm-hmm. and I think like I think the scariest part about that movie for me is that it's um it's about a human being that can't be killed, and he's complete evil. He's like the devil, and I just think that's scary yeah. that there's like yeah. this person can't be killed, and all he is is a human. Yeah, and. I feel like because I know like Rob Zombie had kind of remade them later on, mm-hmm. and uh, and they were pretty good. Yeah, I, I I saw the first one, and it it was you know it it was okay. You know he of course you know Rob Zombie tends to take fil- his films from zero to sixty. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then there's new ones out, but I haven't seen the new ones, and I want to. Like they've got like the new Halloween trilogy that they're making now with uh. Our, our goddess, our queen, Jamie Lee Curtis. Are our we... scream queen. queen. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because she's in those yogurt, those Activia commercials? <laughs> <laughs> we love her. We worship her here. Yes, we love Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> yes, I, I, I love her. She was in, um, she's in Scream Queens, the TV show. Mm-hmm. And, and I, her mom is uh from psycho you know yes um, she was yes. born into it she's like royalty yeah uh, i love her. exactly i but, love her but those movies are so good <laughs> yeah even the new ones the the second one of the new one is coming out this month or in october yeah but yeah the new movies are pretty good time. yeah yeah i, I want to see it. I've, I've heard they're really good i love it they brought her back and she came back yeah yeah, they just uh, redeveloped the storyline because um, in the original movie, she's supposed to be uh, Michael Myers' sister, but they rewrote it so that they're not related. Oh, so. okay. Yeah, because I always mm-hmm. confused with that, like, relation. And, and then at some point, they bring in, like, a little girl in the series, and I'm confused who, like, she is. Oh, and- she's supposed to be uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character's niece, I believe. Oh, yeah, she's supposed to be Michael Myers' niece. Michael so, Myers' same. niece? same. So she's Jamie's daughter? Um, I think niece as well. Yeah, I think niece. Actually, I'm not sure now. <laughs> I have to rewatch them. <laughs> I remember those. And she was so little when she was in them. She did such a good job for being such a little girl. Yeah, you know? I know. And she, she went on to play that uh, one of the characters in Roseanne. And um, she played in the remake. Yeah. She, uh, it yeah, was pretty I cool. That. 
Okay, Num we're on number six, right? Yeah. I Okay, my number six is The Cabin in the Woods. That's a good one. Yeah, that's got some comedy to it too, yeah. right? Yeah, I did not, I had no idea what I was getting into when I, you know, I knew nothing about the movie when I saw it. I was really confused by the opening. Um, but that movie has such an amazing twist. And it's so end, yeah. original and it's such a clever movie. And it, it, it's like, if, if you, if, if you're a horror fan, fan and you haven't seen Cabin in the Woods, you need to go watch Cabin in the Woods. Mm -hmm. Like it's, a it's on the classic. list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember somebody asked the, the creator of the film said, are you going to make a sequel? And he's like, did you not watch the ending of my film? And that, that, spoiler alert someone wants to skip like 20 seconds um where like the whole earth like essentially gets like destroyed by like the demon thing <laughs> You're like yeah let's make a sequel like <laughs> <laughs> honestly i oh, saw it when it was in the theater but i don't remember all that much i just remember it had a comedy spoof to it yeah like it was a self-aware um but but if you think about it, it could it could literally explain almost every horror movie to ever exist. Mm -hmm. Like it could be canon in almost any film. And I think it's amazing, you know? I have to watch that movie again. You should. Like my list is like growing now. <laughs> you should. <laughs> what I need to watch. <laughs> you should. I really, in bed last night, I was really thinking about what's on my list. And I was really tapping into it. And in the process, totally freaking myself out and scaring myself in the pitch, you know, black. <laughs> <laughs> okay what is your number five my number five is actually funny that yours is cabin in the woods because mine is cabin fever that I totally didn't think about that movie that is such a guilty pleasure series for me and it touches on such like a real subject which is disease oh. like this water this flesh eating disease from the water or yeah from yeah, I think they got it from the water in the movie. That's scary. That's like real life. What do you do? <laughs> I love hate those movies. Like, love hate. Like, such a split down the middle. Mm -hmm. I'm not into the, like, the body horror kind of freaks me out. But the concept is like, oh my God, it freaks me out. Like, I want to watch it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the same <sighs> with the tryptophobia thing with me. Because, like, it's the disease on the skin. And that creeps oh. me out. Did, um... Did you see the remake? No, I didn't. I didn't know there was a remake. There was. And I, so I saw the remake. Um, I've seen both. And the biggest thing I've heard about the remake um, is that it was very unnecessary because it, it was remade like only 14 or 15 or less years after the original. And they changed nothing. Nothing oh. has changed. Just the only thing that's updated is like the gore is updated. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they add a little bit more gore, a little bit more pervy stuff. That's it. There's no, there's no other changes. I recently watched this. I watched the second one last year for the first time, and it was ridiculous. The prom scene. Like, have you seen the second Cabin Fever? I don't think I have, but you're, like, refreshing my memory that there is kids, a second one. Kids get infected at a prom. At a okay, prom. That's, <laughs> that's scary. That's and not a good prom night. <laughs> and it's nasty. And then they, they lock all the kids in the school. <laughs> one girl gives birth. <laughs> really? <laughs> but I think what makes the first one is, I forget the actor's name, but it's the guy that plays Sean in Boy Meets World. Oh, I, know, okay. yeah, I don't know his name, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he, he was a heartthrob. Yeah, <laughs> you know, most of the people watching this ain't gonna have no idea. They're gonna be, be like, "You mean Girl Meets World?" <laughs> <laughs> and like, who are these millennials? <laughs> <laughs> they should they be in a, a nursing home? <laughs> What's funny is that I recently found out that I'm not a millennial. <laughs> Apparently, I'm the oldest generation of Gen Z, which does not sit right with me at all. So you're like on the border, I guess. Eh? Um, I call it like apparently my generation is called a zillennial. Okay. I can identify. I can like relate to both, I guess, in different ways. Like it sounds cooler than millennial. Zillennial. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Respect your elders, kids. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. My number five is your next. I don't know if you've ever seen your next. 
I don't think I have. It what is, is it? Highly recommended. Okay, so a lot of scream vibes. Okay. But it is it is about a a rich family. Uh, they're like celebrating their the parents are celebrating their anniversary with their adult children and their adult children, you know, spouses. And all suddenly they get hunted down by basically by bounty hunters. And they get trapped in the house and they're getting killed off one by one. There's a huge twist at the end. I won't spoil it for you. But it turns out the main girl, like a girl, the girlfriend of one of the boys turns out to be like, she grew up in a survival camp and they weren't expecting that. So she's like totally badass and knows how to handle everything. And it's just a really great film. There's a lot of really shocking moments and it kind of pulls on the heartstrings because it's like a family and it's, it's, I highly recommend it's a good movie. Okay, I'm writing that one down. I'm going to look it up when we're You're done. Next. It's from 2011. Yeah. You're next. Okay. Yes. I'm going to look at that up when I'm, when we're done. Yes. So good. It's a good movie. <laughs> it sounds okay. good. What is your um, number four? Okay, classic, An American Werewolf in London. I've never seen that movie, but I know what it it's is. It's so good. You got to watch it this Halloween. It's American so Werewolf in London. It's, it's a complete classic and it's not, the storyline is kind of slow, mm-hmm. but there's just something very nostalgic about watching it. Like just, just watch it. It's so good. And the graph, like the, the, the effects for the eighties, mm-hmm. it reminds me a little bit of Pet Cemetery, the, um, the costumes and everything. Cause like this, uh, like the, the werewolf's best friend, he comes back as a ghost kind of guiding him, uh-huh. but every time the werewolf sees him he's deteriorating more so his like jaw is showing and it's just really good costume effects for the 80s oh gotta watch it it's kinda classic like, kind of like the thing how it's got a lot of really good imagery i guess for the 80s yeah yeah go watch I it i will i will Okay. What's yours? My number four, which I'm almost certain is probably on your list as well, is Sinister. Yes, I have that in my mentions. <laughs> you have your mentions. Okay. Okay. I'm going to cross it out now. <laughs> I love this movie because it genuinely terrified me. Mm-hmm. And even though it scared me, I kept going back and rewatching it. Um, there's just something about it and the tapes and the children and the cast is everything is just so well done and then the ending like holy shit it's so good and that that kind of touches on too with me and pat cemetery about how the kid how a kid turns on their own family Mm -hmm. it's it's scary yeah and and that twist at the end and it's it's so great that this I do enjoy the second one as well but Mm -hmm. I couldn't put it on my list because the second one in my opinion just doesn't compare to how oh yeah first one is they say that the second one the storyline wasn't that great but the actors did a phenomenal phenomenal job the tapes the the tape some tapes are better than others but they Mm -hmm. were pretty freaky for the most part the actors did a really good job but like the storyline we're like it makes the kids less scared, the dead kids less scary when you get to talk to them. Like when you get to see them talk to you and they get to have a point of view. Like that's weird to me. Like I didn't. Yeah. That part of it and then, good. and then in part one too, it's like this whole mystery. You don't know what's happening until the end. Whereas in part two, you already know the mystery. So it's just, it's it's m- mostly following the actors in part two. So I think that's why the actors make yeah. it. But part one is definitely definitely the best I 100% agree and there's been rumors that the that the that the company that owns Sinister and um Insidious wants to make a crossover film they should Uh, that would be so good I I, I, that'd be amazing wouldn't it yeah Uh, it'd be like a multi-universe thing kind of like a whole Stephen King multi-universe yes step out the way Marvel (laughs) (laughs) I'm there. I'm gonna be at that theater. We should go together. We should. I'll go. I'll I'll come up to Canada. Yeah, we'll go look at the it stuff while you're here. (laughs) Okay, what is your number three? My number three is I mentioned, oh actually this is um a different one. I kind of uh went kind of different here, but little shop of horrors. 
Oh, okay. I put in a musical. <laughs> you know, I love musicals. And when you put musical with horror, like, yes. I'm I'm a mu- I'm a musical junkie and I'm a horror junkie. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's such a good two good things to put together. And like I put that in my list because I think um one of the characters in it, the girl that plays Audrey, I think she is one of the most sad. She had the saddest storyline in mm-hmm. a movie that I've seen. Like yeah. all she wanted was to find a life where the grass is greener. And she lived on Skid Row where men abused her. But she always thought that, oh, one day she'll find her dream man and she'll have her dream house and everything. So she was really a sweet girl. And then at the end, like it's an old movie. I'm, I like, I'm going to spoil yeah. it. Uh, like at the end she thought she found true love but the true love fed her to the plant because he believed that if he fed her to the plant the plant would give him wealth and success when all she ever wanted was to find that man to bring her where the grass is green it's so sad is that actually what happened because i've seen i've seen so many bits and pieces of the movie and i know a lot of songs but i've never actually watched the movie the whole way through i didn't know what happened she gets fed to oh. the plant in the movie in the movie they changed it so it's not as traumatic but yeah in the original in the play like the musical the actual Uh on stage she she feeds her or he feeds her to the plant Seymour feeds her to the plant and then when he realizes the plant lied to him and that he actually fed the plant his true love he Mm -hmm. goes into the plant himself and kills himself oh my god well yeah they're remaking this movie. They're remaking Little Shop of Horrors. Are they? Oh my gosh, that's yes. amazing. So maybe, maybe we'll get that ending. <laughs> maybe. I kind of hope we it, do. Yeah, it sticks with you. A traumatic ending actually sticks with the audience. Kind of like how we were saying with Ready and It. It sticks with you. Yeah, like it makes you sad. Like <laughs> Yeah, sadness. Triggering a big emotion in a movie that's what sticks like Titanic Jack dies at the end Romeo and Juliet they die they kill each other she kills herself I forgot how the movie ends but they both die and it's been a huge success for years so same with Ready you don't it's traumatic and it still sticks with people (sighs) that scene of Eddie hold or Richie holding his body like crying oh my god that's the only movie that makes me cry (laughs) okay my number three is the scream series that is nostalgic um i love scream i'm going to be there on opening day when scream 5 comes out in january i'm so excited for that too (laughs) it's never ending i love it yes i love scream there are another i have all the all four movies I used to have an actual prop from the fourth movie. It was a extra mask. Uh, it was like, it was one in an auction. I was given to it uh, for Christmas one year. That's cool. And unfortunately things happened and I no longer have that. And I, I think I have some pictures of me wearing it though. <laughs> yeah, you can say you once had it. I That's once cool. had it. It was amazing and it, such, such a great series. And I love uh, Courtney Cox. Because I was a big mm-hmm. Friends fan, so like uh, her being in there, the, the cast is coming back for the fifth one. So excited for that! And we have to talk about Matthew Lillard again, Matthew being in the Lillard. first one. He's in the first one, and he he makes a cameo in the second one at, at a party. Oh, I don't even remember. Yeah, even though he's it's been dead. so long, <laughs> he's dead. Yes. And I used to love Jamie Kennedy, and he was in oh, yes. all three of them, the first three. Yeah, they. I think they made a mistake by uh, killing him off too soon in the second movie. And I, they admitted they made the mistake because they had put him in the third one yeah, by giving him that cameo with the, the little tape and everything. Mm-hmm. He was such a cool role. And I had such a crush on him when I was a kid. <laughs> you know what? I can understand that. I can, I can see it. <laughs> he was the funny guy. I like the funny guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what is yeah, number two? I number two is a Stephen King. I put Misery. Misery. Oh, so good. My gosh. I think that's a celebrity's worst fear is having someone so obsessed with them that they would do what Kathy Bates does to the <sighs> author in the movie. I forget his name, but he's very famous, and I think he directed the movie as well. It, it, it's um, 
Bill Denver. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. Um, I remember because I, I used to, you know, mi Misery was so iconic. And um, there's a Pink music video by the singer Pink called uh, Please Don't Leave Me. And it's inspired by the movie Misery. And she I haven't seen that. She reenacts a bunch cool. of yeah. She reenacts a bunch of uh, scenes. That's so cool. And they also made a musical. It was starring uh, Bruce Willis and this Aunt is, Jackie from Roseanne. Like Carrie, right? Because Carrie's a musical too now, right? Is Carrie a musical? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? I don't like. What, okay, what are we doing here? <laughs> yeah, I know. Eh? We should be going to shows. <laughs> <laughs> so is Saw. There's also a Saw the musical. Oh my gosh, that sounds kind of lame, but I, I'd be for it. <laughs> There's also an It musical, which is iconic. I can't see it. it I on, can't see it. It is iconic. I just can't fathom it. It's all on YouTube. It's a, it's a parody musical. It's all on YouTube, and I highly recommend it. It's funny. Okay, I'm going to have to watch that. That's yeah, like all, all my to-do list tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what's, okay. um, what's your number two? Okay, so not everyone's going to agree with me, but I was obsessed with these movies as a teenager. The Final Destination movies. Yes, I, I was thinking of mentioning that. They were so good. I love them. I don't care if people think they're garbage. I don't care what anyone else thinks. I mm -hmm. love those movies. But I specifically put in my notes, the Final Destination series and <laughs> quotations, not number four. I haven't seen, I've only seen part one, so I've never seen the others. Oh, but my, I won't watch part four. It sucks. No offense yeah, okay. to nobody that likes part four. I'm just stating my opinion. It's awful. It's bad. Um, my favorite's number three. I'm a huge roller coaster adrenaline junkie, and it's a roller coaster. Um, mm -hmm. But the first Final Destination is such a, it's, it's an iconic movie. It, it, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it's, one, two, three, and five are all such good movies, and uh, a sixth one is in production right now, and it's supposed to take place around firefighters and EMT workers, and allegedly- That's so cool. It's supposed to come out next year, hopefully. Uh, COVID really set back any type of filming or production on. Um, I'm so excited. <laughs> I That sounds so exciting. Like, that, those movies, it's scary to think about, like, I've always thought about if like say if my time was to come and I missed it or like you know I um yeah. yeah I missed it would I be next somewhere else like am I destined to die type of thing that's scary yeah and um the fun fact the fourth one is the first movie I ever saw first horror movie I ever saw in the theaters even though I hate the fourth one that was the first mm -hmm. horror movie movie theater experience for me when I was 13. But such a great, su su such a great series. They'll always hold a special place in my heart. I have a parody mm -hmm. of them on an old YouTube account of mine <laughs> from when I was a teenager. Um, so I always have positive memories of Final Destination. Okay. What is your number one? Of course, it's it chapter two for all the reasons we've already said it having a traumatic ending that stuck with people. So it's just chapter two. Chapter two for me. And I think it's because it might be a biased thing that like, um, like I was saying, when I was a kid, I loved the first original because I was a kid too. And I loved all the, all the child yeah. actors. But now that I'm adult and I watched it from an adult point of view, I love the adult actors the best although the children did an amazing job they're great actors but yeah. yeah for me it's the adults and just how it ended because it's it's that big question mark of what happened with Eddie and Richie and it's just so sad that Eddie's gone and Richie can never fulfill this like love he had for him oh yeah. I know <laughs> sad um. My number one should come to a, no surprise to literally anyone. My number one is it chapter one and two. So, <laughs> we both got um, like the same number. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like, so I like the first one slightly better than the second one. And that's only because no one from the losers club dies in the first one. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. my only reasoning, but I love them both so much. And like you said, like the mini series, you can really relate to that. I felt when I was watching the first one, it was giving me nostalgia 
flashbacks from my own childhood, mm -hmm. even though I, you know, was not around in 1989, but it was just the way the kids talked and the way they interact with each other and the way, you know, everything. And there's something I want to point out between these two movies is that everyone says how when they, when they were kids, they seem like they're more badass and they seemed less afraid of things. And when they were adults, they were all scaredy cats. But yeah, that's true though. But when you're a kid, you don't realize stuff as much. Like as an adult, they realize, yeah, you know, you die, you die. As a kid, yeah. it, you know, you don't fully think about that. You don't fully process it, you know. And so I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, rest in peace, Stan. Rest in peace, Eddie. <laughs> My boys. But that's so true what you said, though, because when I was a kid, I, or when I was a teenager, I'd walk on the streets at 2 a.m., walking home, whatever, no fear. Yay. Doing it at, like, like mid-20s to where I am now at 30, it's, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm scared to walk around in daylight now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, like it's scary. Understand. A car passes by, and it's like, ooh, I don't know what, you know, like, <laughs> are they going to stop? Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. I, I don't like it. It's like, no, I, I agree. So we both have, we only, we only had two in common on both of our lists. But that's I think good it's though. good because we got variety here. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> how many how many honorable mentions do you have? I have um, four. You have four. I have eight. Okay. Yeah, I crossed out some because we already mentioned them. But <laughs> okay. I'll I'll say one of mine first then. Okay. So okay. Like, honorable mention for me. So these were these are stuff that I really wanted to put on the list, but I couldn't fit them. Um, is the ruins. I don't know if you've ever seen The Ruins. I've heard of it. Um, I haven't from, seen it. From like 2005, 2006, uh, this group of college students go to uh, a different country. I, I think it's Mexico, but it might not be. Okay. Uh, and they visit like this temple. And then all suddenly the natives are like attacking them and not letting them step off the temple. And they're freaking out. They got no idea why. And it turns out the, this might sound silly, but it's the way the movie does it. It's, it's really freaky. The plants are essentially infecting them with a disease and okay. slowly killing them. And it's I heard of this. And it's it, it's based off a book, and it's I highly recommend it. It will freak you out. It, it's 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 a good it, it's a good ride. Like <laughs> okay, I wrote it down. I'm gonna look it up later. Yes, and I, it's a no, nobody ever talks about it, and it it should be talked about more because it's really freaky. That sounds freaky. Okay, I'm going to look that one up. Yes. I might watch it. <laughs> you should. Um, let's on, see. One of... Hmm? It's on a lot of streaming services, by the way. Like, it's, it's okay. pretty easy to find. It's so easy to find yeah. everything now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, right? Oh, my gosh. I have... My favorite honorable mention is Arachnophobia. Oh, I won't even touch that movie. <laughs> it's so good jeff daniels and it has a little comedy streak in it is, is a it little not, bit is that the one david arquette no no that's a different no david um arquette is a different one. john goodman's in it well, how old is arachnophobia how old did that come early out? 90s early 90s i don't do mm -hmm. bugs uh, <laughs> me neither <laughs> especially spiders um i will it's so good though <laughs> It's so good. Jeff Daniels makes that movie. Jeff Dan that's his name, right? Jeff Jeff Daniels. Yeah. He makes the movie. Ugh. It's so good. Oh, okay. <laughs> it just it's <laughs> it triggers the fear of spiders <sighs> and like and deadly spiders. And it's just it's <laughs> masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My next one again. It's not the greatest movie. I know a lot of people don't think it's that good. My husband thought it was not the greatest. We saw it in theaters together, but you know what? I don't care. It's like a guilty pleasure movie for me. Mm -hmm. And that's the Velcro experiment. I've never heard of that. You've the never Velcro heard experiment? Of it? The Velcro. No. Velcro. Yes. Velcro. Okay. Yes. I'm going to write that down. So it's about, um, I believe it takes place in Cuba or Colombia. And a bunch of Americans, they have like a office building in this country where they work. I'm not sure what job they do, but you know, there's a bunch of Americans that work inside an American office building in a different country. And um, 
essentially they all get locked in. They don't know what's going on. And I don't know if I should spoil it, but something happens and they all are basically slowly getting killed off and they're being told by someone on a loudspeaker that they have to kill each other, otherwise they're going to die. And it's essentially a social experiment program. Um, that I don't was kind of like you, Saw, a little bit. A little bit, but not the same. I don't want to tell you how they die because when you first see it, it's kind of shocking. Okay. Um, but it, it came out in like, I think 2017. I think it came okay. out, but it's, but it's such a good movie and it, it's really sad though. There's a lot of, you know, you get to know characters and it's really sad and they all, they, you know, they're all family essentially. And yeah. But okay. I I'm, I'm glad you're naming movies I've never <laughs> seen before because like now it's just, it's added to my list. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And what do I have? I have Texas Chainsaw. Um, franchise and that's mostly the scariest part about that to me is that it's based on true events uh Ed Gein I think Ed Gein yeah I haven't seen the original I want to but I've seen um like a lot of the new ones Mm -hmm. Um, I think the new ones are better than the original the original um has kind of a slowness to it it's it's good but The, the one from like 2003 really creeped me out that was really good. Jessica yeah. Beale did a great job being the lead character. Those movies are, te- they're traumatizing. They're terrifying yeah. movies. And I think that's a big reason why I didn't put them on my list is that those, to me, those venture off in the point where I'm not watching them because I genuinely enjoy them. They actually really scare me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's like a Michael Myers thing for me where it's like this, how can this human being be so detached, like empathetically from other human beings that they he could or yeah. in this case it's a family that they can do this to other people like i know it's scary movies, they try to give him kind of like more empathy in the new movies um there's like i haven't seen the, the new new one that recently I, came out but the leather faced one yeah, i know what you're talking about it, but they, i know they tried to give him like a i guess more relatable like oh yeah they he's, made him such a sweet guy he's just like you and me <laughs> 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 he's just a little crazy <laughs> okay the next one I have on my list you might have never heard of this one either not a lot of people have I saw it I found it one night on Netflix and I was like I'm gonna give it a whirl um uh, mm-hmm. it's called Grave Encounters uh, it's I've a never ghost, heard of it it's a ghost movie um it's a found footage film it's about a um a television reality type show about like ghosts, like ghost hunter type show. Uh, they're filming in a haunted um, in- insane asylum. And okay. basically they get trapped there at night and the entire building's haunted. Creepy stuff's happening and it's ghosties and ooh and spooky. And <laughs> that um, sounds pretty good. It, 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 and it's really creepy. It is, it's really creepy. It's, a, it's found footage uh, style. And you said it's on Netflix? It used to be. I don't know if it still okay. is. This is I saw a long time ago, but it's called Grave Encounters. Again, you have Canada right. Netflix. So yeah, so it might be different. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have the best Netflix, apparently. <laughs> but you might be able to find it on Hulu or Amazon or Grave Encounters. Something else. Yeah. Okay. I wrote that one down too. There's a sequel I'm to it. Check it out. There's a sequel, but the sequel's not that great. Okay. Well, that's gonna be on my list. Yes. <laughs> Okay, do you have another one? Yes. Um, I don't know if you've seen it before. The Good Son Mm-mm. with Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood and their kids in it. Is that the one where like, is that the one where there's like, there's like a scene and they're both hanging off a cliff? Yeah. Uh, Macaulay Culkin's a psychopath. Oh, that's the only thing I know about that is that scene. I don't know anything about that movie. That, that last scene, too, is another thing that sticks with people because at the end, okay, so Macaulay Culkin's character is a complete psychopath and he, he doesn't, he'll, care, he'll kill his family. That's how big of a psychopath he is. And he's like 10 in the movie. And um, Elijah Wood is his cousin. So they're both hanging off the cliff. And in that moment, the mom has to choose if she's going to save her son, Macaulay Culkin, or her nephew, Elijah Wood. And she decides to save her nephew because she realizes her son is a psychopath that will kill her, kill the family if he was triggered. 
that's, that's so sad that's so like that pulls on your heartstrings oh my gosh yeah because her mother let go of her own son it's just crazy the good son i should tell it's probably really emotional i should watch that mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. it's a good movie he macaulay culkin did a really good job he makes the movie yeah okay yeah so the next one i have to say okay so this would have been on my list if it wasn't for the controversies um surrounding the director um and i own these films before i knew what the director did okay i did not know and i do not support or condone anything he does however i do enjoy these first two movies but i do not in any way support him or going forward i don't support anything that he's involved in and that is jeepers creepers one and two um, those are good movies they are and they terrify me <laughs> yeah. um, kind of reminds me of freddy krueger too Mm-hmm. just, just like, the makeup he's scarier because he doesn't talk yeah um there's a deleted like scene. a scarecrow yeah there's a deleted scene you could find him talking online and he had like a southern accent <laughs> but they cut it out no but those movies are really good and they're really scary especially like such good theme songs too they have the jeepers creepers oh. theme song and it, it sticks with you they're so creepy and they're like so iconic like the second one you think of that school bus Mm-hmm. and um the third one was garbage i'm sorry if anyone liked the third one it was gar- to me it was just it was not good i don't know if you saw the third one no was but not- i probably won't watch it mm-hmm. however <laughs> first the first two are iconic enough the fourth one is coming out in november i believe and oh. the director has nothing to do with the fourth one so i might actually see it okay and i, I might have- go see it too I have high hopes for it. Yeah, because I, I had vowed I wouldn't, you know, I would not put forth any more money. I would not support him. But yeah, those movies used to scare me. Uh, Justin Long, the eyes at the end of the movie. Traumatizing. I, I saw the movie when I was six. I wasn't supposed to be watching it, but I was hiding behind the couch while my parents watched it. And, um, and it traumatized me. Like, yeah. Yeah, same. And that's that's why you remember it to this day because it traumatized yes. you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you have any more on your um on your on woman Jesus? I have one more. I have um orphan or the orphan. I forget uh, what, but I it's it's similar. Movie. It's similar. The good son, but twisted ending. Messed up ending. Yep. And that little girl is so good in it. And there's oh. she's making a part two right now. And I'm so excited. Oh, there was a, they're making a part two? Yeah, same Ooh. actress. Ooh, it's a creepy movie. I can't even talk about it because, like, it's still fresh. Like, a fresh movie that people who haven't seen it should see it just for the twist ending. Yeah. But um, who who is in it? Vera Farmiga, isn't it? Yeah, Vera Farmiga. She oh, does she a is? very good job. Yeah, she plays the mom. And oh, she's, she- like, the kick-ass character at the end our horror icon our new yes. horror goddess i love her she is she i really love her too is. her and her sister uh tasa i think her name's yeah. tasa she's in like the american her. horror stories oh yes and see for me american horror stories um actually after this before we went i was actually gonna talk about horror tv so um, mm-hmm. i'm gonna save that for that but okay. okay, my next one, I'm just gonna say these two together because they're pretty similar. Zombie okay. Land and Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. I only they're like, iconic. I don't like zombie movies unless they're comedies. hmm And they're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, they're really good movies. Great actors. It's yeah, top list actors. And right. yeah. Both those movies. If you haven't seen those movies, you should see them. They're fun. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I mean, trigger warning for a lot of gore and, of course, zombies eat people and stuff like that. But, like, they're really funny. Like, don't take them seriously, you know. <laughs> um, Good you have, movies. Do you have any more or no? No, I'm, mine's done. Okay. We I, covered them all. I have two more. I have Cloverfield. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, always terrifying to me. Uh, there's a part where the girl, a girl gets, like, attacked and then they, like, pull her behind a curtain and she, like, explodes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was traumatizing. <laughs> you know, oh, but that movie, I have Cloverfield. Like, um, the sequel, the sequel to it was okay. I, I liked that the, the first sequel to it was like 10 Cloverfield Lane. And mm-hmm. then they made the third one about space, and I really didn't care for that one. Yeah. So, kind of went too far. Yeah. Like, it was, it was 
okay. You know, it was okay. But, mm -hmm. Okay, my last one, which was a last minute um, add-on, because I felt like we had to talk about it, is Hereditary. I just recently saw that. It how was you, scary. You, how that, do you think about it? That beheading scene, I was not expecting it, and that was just traumatic. Oh. Yeah, it was. It was. It was one of those movies I had to watch twice to see if I could fully understand it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I fully understood it. Like I, I understand that it has to do with. Um, yeah, I think it's better if you just explain it. Okay, so spoiler alert, <laughs> spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen Hereditary and really wants to watch it. Um, spoiler alert. Um, so the little girl is was the um was the demon so um but the demon wasn't happy in a female body um so he wanted a the demon wanted a male body so that's why it was set up for the little girl to die who was not the little girl was actually a demon the whole time and um it's like the it's like the demon that they worship in payment and um, the whole, they wanted the older brother's body. Okay, that's and cool. The cult, that's deep. Yeah, and the cult worshiped this demon. And the grandmother that died also worshiped this demon. And she didn't get a chance to, to um, have the demon possess her grandson because she wasn't in her daughter's life at that point. Um, she had just came back into her life when her daughter was pregnant with um, her granddaughter. So she didn't have a choice. She had to put her in a girl body. So, that is deep. <laughs> so if you go back and rewatch it, it might make a little more sense to you. Yeah, uh, I might do that because I liked it. But I yeah. just I couldn't get the ending. But yeah, you probably do have to watch it twice. Yeah, I, I actually had to do a couple of Google searches to like fully understand as well. But yeah, you think about it, that's such a that's such a good like like oh my god, such an original story. You know, like it's so good. Uh, that is good. So you watch it the first time for the scare, and then you watch it the second time to understand it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do that quite a bit with movies. I, I watch them twice to fully digest them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That's the best thing to do, especially if you're like a movie, and like an like you like to analyze movies. That's yes. you got to keep watching them over and over again. I do. I, I I love analyzing movies. I thought about doing on my YouTube account doing um what's it called uh horror movie reviews you but should like, I feel like I'm such an awkward presence that it might not work <laughs> like no know. you're so good at this I don't Just know do it. um so yeah there's our list of all of our films that we really like I'm sure there's more that we just can't think of that we love <laughs> probably oh my gosh probably I had a hard time I had a hard time with this list I had a hard time numbering them because I was like, oh, I, I can't think of any movies. And all of a sudden they all poured out. And I was like, oh, now I need to number them. I don't know what order to put them in. My top, <laughs> five, my top five was super easy. But 10 to 5, I had such a hard time picking like what should be in there. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. Horror movies are my favorite genre. So it's, it's just hard to rate them. Same. Um, I wanted to talk about horror TV really quick. Because mm -hmm. I know when it comes to the horror genre, horror genre, horror TV kind of gets glossed over. Yeah. No one ever talks about it. So I want to know if you had any horror TV shows that you really like. The best thing I can come up with, and it's old, it's a classic, is uh, Tales from the Crypt Keeper back in the 90s. Ooh, okay. It was scary. <laughs> All the stuff I know are, are modern. Um, Bates Motel. Which, yes that's my favorite which can be a little slow but mm -hmm. i think it's worth the payoff mm -hmm. um the first siege season of the purge um didn't I didn't watch it the first season's pretty good the second season i might even bother watching i didn't think it sounded interesting to me um i watched one episode of the mist and i didn't like it yeah, that, that was kind of slow, but the movie's pretty good. The movie's and good. And the book is great. The ending of the movie triggers me to no end, and that's, like, a big reason why I don't ever talk about it, you know what I mean? Like, it makes me so, yeah. like, like, yeah. oh, like, oh, like, how, like, I understand, <laughs> but, like, how could you, you know? 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and that's like the thing that sticks with people at the end is how could he do that? Yeah. Um, there's a mm-hmm. TV show called Slasher. It's a Netflix original. It's I haven't heard of that one. Three seasons. It's, it's like an anthology. Each uh, season's a different story. And it's very gruesome. But I think it's good. Okay. Um, it sounds good. What else is there? Scream Queens, which is a comedy horror. I love, I mean, obviously, I, I love, Scream Queens is a cross between Glee and American Horror Story, and it goes perfectly. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's all Ryan Murphy, right? Both of them. All, yeah, all yeah. three of them. All three of them are Ryan Murphy, which is crazy to think the same guy could make. Like, yeah, he's got a good, he's got a good, uh, a good imagination or, yeah. yeah. American Horror Story, I'm actually not a fan of, but I know a lot of people are big fans of American Horror Story. Mm-hmm. Um, I just have a hard time getting into them. I've attempted to watch more than half of the seasons and I just can't do it. You know what I mean? I, like, I think there was three seasons I can get into and they're the most recent ones too. Really? But, yeah. I mean, like to me, Asylum and Coven and Murder House are really good. And um, I liked Revenoke and I liked Apocalypse, but um, the 1984 season, I couldn't get into it because I think most of it was already said and done and like the, the storyline kept changing and I just couldn't follow it. I got bored, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, and then, okay. The first season of Scream, the TV show, I recommend. Mm-hmm. And then I can't, um, I'm not okay with this. I loved that show. Yeah. It's so sad. It got canceled. Yeah. Damn COVID. And- it's so good. Um, I know a lot of people don't, I classify this as horror because of nature, but obviously a Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a, that's a good show. Great series. I'm actually doing a podcast on it soon with my friend Mona. We're going to talk about Stranger Things. And like, there's so much to cover too, because it's just, it's so good. Yes. Um, oh, I don't know if you've ever seen Castle Rock. Have you seen that? I tried and I couldn't because I was like, oh, Pennywise is in it. And like, I couldn't. I couldn't do it like I didn't understand <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean yeah it's it's like one of those twists you have to keep watching to the very end and it's the whole uh Stephen King multiverse and like yeah. there's like actors in it from different movies but they canceled it after season two because of COVID oh, I'm so sad. damn COVID, COVID I know a lot of stuff because COVID mm. is why we don't have Stranger Things season four right now because of you know we would have had it by now um I can't think of any other tv show uh, I do want to say I recently watched the Fear Street uh, trilogy. They're good. I loved that. I, I, a lot of people I'm hearing hated them, but I, I loved them. Like I think because like a lot of people are hit and have like a hit or miss for R.L. Stein just because he's like a kid scary it's, movie. It's like not. It's they did not go with that at all. Like I loved them. They they almost went on my list, but I felt like okay, they're so new. I want to digest them more before I. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean um but it's very deep like once you watch the third one and you're at the end like obviously I'm not going to say anything but it's it's deep <laughs> yes oh I, they're so good uh I watched them with my husband like I showed them after I've watched them the first time he loved them and he's not even a horror movie fan um and then the last thing I wanted to talk to you about because I really wanted to talk to this topic about somebody do you have a horror movie or horror movies that like, even though you're such a fan, you sat down and watched them and you said, no, this is too far. Like, this is not what I like, like, you know, and not, not, and not because they're bad movies because the acting writing sucks, but because of th- something happens where it's just too much. Um, the only, okay, the only movie I can think of I would never watch it again. I could only get through the first 30 minutes. Human Centipede. Oh, I've seen that. Did you watch the full movie? I watched the full movie. I um, couldn't do it. <laughs> because I, I felt like the thought was gross, but what they actually showed wasn't that bad. Um, I will never watch the second or third one because I heard that they're absolutely disgusting. But I agree that movie's gross. I... It wasn't my cup of tea. My friends were watching it. Only reason why I, I even sat down to watch that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a couple. Um, I don't like cannibal movies. Yeah. 
don't like stuff like that. And I saw The Green Inferno with my friends in theaters. Um, it's about- I've seen it. Uh, it's about a bunch of Americans basically get captured by a cannibalistic tribe. tribe oh. And it's terrifying. It and sounds terrifying. They tried to mix a little bit of comedy with it, but it didn't quite um, land. And there's, a, there's like a scene where you first realize the tribe is not friendly and they're cannibals. And it's very shocking and very traumatizing. And I never again will ever watch that movie. Um, I've never seen Cannibal Holocaust, but I'll never watch it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a fan of cannibal movies mm-hmm. either, other than Texas Chainsaw, and but you don't even see cannibalism yeah. in that those movies. And it's kind of, I also yeah. like Jeepers Creepers, like that's kind of like a cannibal movie, but it's different in a way, you know. I yeah. Have, I have a line that I do not, that I don't cross. And um, there are certain movies I feel like, okay, this isn't, you're, this isn't, you're just doing this because you can. Um, yeah. Like, because I know there's a movie that went viral on TikTok called Megan is Missing. Um, Only a part of it. It's like, how do I describe it? A girl goes missing. It's a documentary about her. And it's like all found footage. (laughs) Her best friend gets kidnapped, finds her. And it's, it's gross. Okay. It's gross. It's traumatizing. And whatever and that went viral on tiktok and then everyone else was like well that's a that's a baby movie um you should watch this this is disgusting and more scary and just like you know is that story about cannibalism it's not it's not but it's but it's it what makes it scarier it's it's like realistic okay yeah that Um, scares me realistic horror movies like the strangers Mm -mm. Yeah, um, I'm not gonna get through that. <laughs> yeah, the strangers. Um, last house on the left, I think. Ah, uh, um, yeah, that movie's traumatizing. Kidnap movies in general terrify me. Um, I also don't like. Ironically, I don't like films about uh, pandemics or. Um, there's a movie called Contagion. Oh, I I enjoyed that movie just because um, it related. To I enjoyed the it. Moment. But I, I, I was afraid of that movie. Like, I was afraid of COVID actually happening in real life. And, you know, obviously it's a lot more severe and, you know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's a yeah. Um, Speaking of, um, you, you talked about how you didn't like kidnapping movies. It just made me think about um, the, the series I wrote. Um, it's about a kidnapper. No. <laughs> but, yeah, but Ooh. it's... um. She he it's about a detective that kidnaps these five people and mm-hmm. one of the girls and, and one of the women in it because it's it's five adults and one of them wears like rose colored sunglasses and she falls in love with him and there's this huge Stockholm syndrome romance. Oh, some Beauty and the Beast mm-hmm. stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. For, I love for, that forbidden romance. <laughs> for me, it's like you know, kids, animals, cannibalism, kidnapping, and. Uh, sexual assault <coughs> those are like it's a big pile of no I don't touch that what do you mean? yeah you know I can yeah do, I'm not a big body horror fan but I can do it like you know like just don't kill animals no because uh the movie cannibal holocaust actually killed real animals and you watch real animals die when watching that movie and I always, I'm not gonna watch no, it and it's, it's <laughs> wrong you don't kill a real yeah. thing for a film I've never uh, even heard of this movie. I I, w- I would never watch it. I was disgusting. traumatized when I was a kid. When the first movie I saw in theaters, I was two years old, and we went to go see me and my family went to go see um, Ace Ventura Part Two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's a comedy movie, but it traumatized me that first scene when the monkey falls from. It was the monkey, yeah. The monkey falls from uh, uh, Jim Carrey while he's climbing the mountain. And that traumatized me. I screamed in the theater and my mom had to take me out and I cried in the hallway during the whole movie. And ever since then, I can't watch an animal dying. Mm -mm. I I, I think I I said Final Destination was my first movie horror film, but I always forget when I was four, my uh, parents took me to see Scream 3 in the movie theater when I was four years old. 
And wow, it's weird. That's badass. I know. <laughs> and there's a scene that I remember in Scream 3 that actually happened in Scream 2, but I remember seeing it in Scream 3 at age four and crying in the theater and having a panic attack over it. And which is weird because it was something that happened in the second one. And I would have been one when the second one came out and I wouldn't have remembered it. Mm -hmm. But it's really weird. But yeah, that was my first. I think it was Scream 3 mm -hmm. and then Final Destination 4 was my second. I was like 13. So I was exposed. I was exposed really young. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. You've been watching horror movies for you're like you're a you're a scream queen at this point yeah, I, am, I am a scream queen and I, i'm pretty desensitized to a lot of things but like you said everybody has their own trigger yeah and everyone is gonna get like you know i know you talked about your phobias i've got ironically i have a clown phobia i know nobody would have ever guessed <laughs> I have a maybe that's phobia. why you love it so much like yeah, it I'm triggers it triggers it i'm and afraid it's... of tim curry more than i am of uh bill skarsgård yeah <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm afraid of being bit, like underground. Um, and then I have a huge like an arachnid like bug phobia. And then I don't even know. Like I've got like such like I'm afraid of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. It's called I, being an adult. <laughs> and um, I don't like car stuff. <laughs> like that's uh, understandable. Final destination two. The opening scene tragedy is a car pile up and that's like is that where the log scary. comes out mm -hmm. of the truck that's so funny that you mention it because when i was walking home the other day i saw a truck with the <laughs> logs in it and i always look at it even though i've never seen that destination part i don't fuck with you <laughs> yep no. yep um, every car is like backed away just because they probably seen it <laughs> I, I do recommend though like watching the rest of the final destination movies Especially mm -hmm. Final Destination 2, like, is actually really good. Like, yeah, Final Destination I need to watch 2, it. It's a fan favorite. It's, like, deemed, like, the best out of all of them is the second one. It's, like, the I'll have to watch them. Yeah. You should, it's should always, do. it's been on my to-do list for so many years, but thank you for reminding me because I'm going to write it down. You won't regret it. I promise you, you won't regret it. I won't. I know I won't regret it. Final Destination has a star because that's first. Yes. Like, um, <laughs> There's so many, there's so many good movies and I'm so excited because um, on my live streams and stuff, people have been asking me what movies do you recommend and like nothing comes to mind when that you put on the spot. It's like, oh, uh, yeah, it's a true. Movie? <laughs> I'm always like it. <laughs> it's the only movie I can think of. And it. Um, <laughs> a Stranger Things question mark? Like, yeah. Stranger Things. That's got aliens. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's another movie that I don't watch. I watch the alien movies. I, I don't watch alien movies. Like, you mean aliens? The movie like, alien movies? Those aliens? Yeah. I don't watch them, no. They, they, they freak me out. I'm just not interested in extraterrestrial. Like, oh. it's, I like paranormal oh. and dead. I like paranormal and dead. And psychopaths. <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like slasher, and I also like horror movies that got a good story. Like, it. Like, I, that they have a good uh, story to them mm -hmm. but I think my favorite type is slasher and I guess maybe creature feature depending on what the creature is and, and dolls doll I've never been a big doll person there's a doll <laughs> movie called dead silence that I own I've seen that but not yeah. for a very long time it's creepy it was a creepy movie I for totally forgot that even ever existed until I and I have that movie and you know what's funny I have a, a movie called drag me to hell and I've never even seen it and I own it I've heard that's a really scary movie. I haven't seen it either. And I, I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I just, I just have all these rich movies. Um, but, but, uh, no. Everyone always asks me, like, what movie, what movies do you recommend? So I, I, now I get to screenshot this list and I can post it on my Discord and be like, stop asking me. Here are some movies. This is them. Watch these. <laughs> like. Like, you know, but of course they have to look up each movie to make sure there's not something that's going to bother them in it. Because, you know, everyone's going to have a uh, different, you know. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different trigger. So. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It, 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 I did not realize how many young children were in the It fandom until I joined uh, TikTok. Mm -hmm. Well, I was, I started as a young kid in the It fandom, but it was I did back too. in the good old days. <laughs> 
I did too. I, you know, I've been a fan since I was 12. Um, I, I kind of get a little feisty when, when kids fight with me on stuff. And I'm just like, I've been here for 23 years. Respect your elders. <laughs> like some nine-year-old on TikTok and then pushing me out of here. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, y'all, I was four when I started watching it. That was 1995. Move on. Peace out. You don't fight with the grandma here. <laughs> Do you fight with your grandma? No, don't fight with me. <laughs> um, but like, there's so many really young kids and, it, and it's like when I make content, it's like, okay, so many little, like little kids are watching my content. And I'm not talking about 13 plus. I'm talking about like the literal nine-year-olds that are watching my mm-hmm. content. No oh, yeah. any nine-year-old that might be watching this. But uh, it's just, it's very, it's a weird feeling. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, social media was around when in the 90s. Like, I, I, it'd probably be me watching all the it fandom stuff too, for sure. Yeah. And like, I don't blame them because, you know, Losers Club really was like, you know, a lot of people saw themselves in Losers Club and it's really tough. Mm-hmm. Stop scratching my couch. Sorry, my cat. <laughs> Sorry. What a cutie. She's over here scratching my couch for attention. <laughs> this is so cute. Like I, I thought recently with a young kid on TikTok about Stanley's age in it. And they're trying to tell me Stan is a year younger than everyone else. And I said, no, in the movies, he celebrates his bar mitzvah, meaning he was 13. Calm mm-hmm. down. <laughs> he wants your attention. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, she just went. You look like you have a very comfy chair. I do. This is my husband's gaming chair. Oh, cute you want, kitty. You want attention? She has such nice colors. Oh my yeah. goodness. Her muzzle is all three different colors. And what uh, a cute cat. Yeah, everyone loves her. She's such a big baby. She's uh what my she, her name is Delilah. She's what my account's named after. But um, mine are mine are somewhere. I don't know where they are. <laughs> I love cats. They're, they're just Me too. They're perfect. They um, are. But people were telling me Stanley's a year younger. I'm like, no, he's, he's yeah. 13. Or Mitzvah's 13. And that was like summer. And then uh, Richie was born March. It says he's 13 specifically on the post. They're like, no, like maybe in the book miniseries is different. But in the movies, they're all 13. Stop fighting with me about this. I'm an adult that doesn't have a wife. Mm. <laughs> and I will, and I will continue. I'm pretty sure in the books they're supposed to be 11, I think. They are 11 in the book. Um, somebody said Stanley is younger in the book, but then somebody else told me Stanley's older in the book, that he's like a slightly mm. different age in the book than the other kids or something. Jeez, I read it in 2015 the last time, so I don't even remember. So I'm, I can't I'm, really state I'm, anything. I'm suffering through a reread right now. It's really hard for me to uh, read Stephen King books because they're so long, but I'm doing yeah. it. Um, there's a lot in Stephen King books it's, it's a big they're big books <laughs> yeah and like I'll make, yeah I'll make videos on like an it, I'll make an it video and I'll I'll trigger a bunch of like 40 year olds and they'll be like read the book <laughs> and I'm just like I am <laughs> I'm not even joking people love to troll behind camera <laughs> behind their screens jeez <laughs> it's a joke <laughs> calm down it was a, i had a video about eddie's mom slash wife and it went viral it got uh it's like it's like at 1.7 million views oh that one i saw that one i was like you go girl and can you imagine there's so i can't imagine why so many people are so pressed but so many people are so like yeah that's the point they're supposed to be the same person read the book and i'm just like it's a joke <laughs> yeah how come people are so serious jeez I'm like, my, my whole account is a joke. My whole life's a joke. Calm down. <laughs> it's okay. I, I have a whole um, army of like a fandom that will, uh-huh. they will jump at the chance. Oh yeah. Me. You're, you're popular. You're like, you're the mother of the fandom. I'm the grandma. I don't <laughs> exist anymore. You're my mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because. It's so weird that everyone calls me the mom because I'm like on my Discord, I feel more like, like it, everyone says the mom is a joke, 
but I feel more like the big sister, you know, like I got more like, I, you can come to me for advice and I'm going to be here and, you know, like, okay, then I'll be the mom. <laughs> You'll be the big sister. <laughs> but I've been told that, and I've I've graciously like graciously accepted. Okay, I'll be the mother of your fan. I'm like, you need somebody to support you, right? Like, oh yeah, you got like a motherly caring energy, and like you can oh, feel that in your TikToks. Oh, thank you. Because there's been some people that were like, they were like, they were afraid to talk to me because they thought I would be standoffish for some reason. And I'm just like, well, I'm so sorry mm-hmm. to get off that vibe, but unless you disrespect me, I'm gonna be chill with everyone. Yeah, like you know um no I don't get that vibe from you at all you're so super sweet I feel like I feel like you're the type that would bake me a pie and if I could bake I would I could bake you some cookies that sounds good I like cookies (laughs) and like there's like um there's just like so many people in the fandom and it's so sweet how how a lot of them treat me oh what's up my kitty came this is Kramer, if he wants to. Kramer? Kramer. Oh my god. Uh, he, he went away. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Like, okay, if any, if whoever sat through this hour and a half plus, we'll see how long this turns out after all the edits. Thank you so much for watching. And um, I promise to do this more. I'm sorry, I haven't been very active on my YouTube. I'm just old and don't really know how YouTube works. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Um, and maybe I can have Tammy back and we can talk about some other things or horror movies again or whatever. So, um, thanks for watching and, um, I love you guys. And, um, Eddie's mom is very attractive and, um. Oh yeah. (laughs) Eddie's mom has got it going on. (laughs) I sell merch shirts that's. (laughs) It's perfect. (laughs) <laughs> but okay bye everybody bye, bye.